cage for hours. Please. Greetings and salutations. This is Cage's Kiss, the ultimate cage cast, where we discuss each of the National Treasure's cinematic masterpieces and his life. We also try to glean whatever kernels of wisdom we can from his character that week. My name is Linda, but you can call me the cheese. In fact, this week I'm a Greek cheese, so call me Mizithra. M- I'm Mithandru? <laughs> Mithandru? <laughs> I'm I'm Donnie, and I'm kind of a Greek, but not Italian. How's that uh, working out for you? Uh, you know, it's a little extra virgin now and then. <laughs> oh, God damn it. <laughs> oh, I'm Adrian. I'm basically half Polish, so World War II didn't go so good for me. <laughs> <laughs> good news from the war front. National treasure Nicolas Cage will be joining our boys overseas to give old man Hitler the what for. Now, my first question to you is who let you out of the kitchen into the radio booth? Well, women don't belong here, you <laughs> stupid ditzy bitch. Those people were allies. He was Italian. God damn it. How the fuck are we supposed to get behind a Nazi ally? God damn it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Ah, dead gum. Those people taking up them buildings one over on 42nd Street. I tell you. Ah. God damn it. Okay, okay, okay. Shut up, shut up. I got this. I got this. Okay, okay. Alternative facts. <clears throat> Today's story follows Captain Antonio Corelli, the man who doesn't like Hitler, but loves music, life, and fucking ladies in the bum, why not? It's Captain Corelli's Madeline. Butt stuff. Butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that Italian army, gee whiz, they sure hate that Hitler, but Mussolini's a okay. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good follow-up to the movie Sallow, where I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> You know, I wish I was watching Salo because uh, watching like a hundred people forced to eat shit is a lot better than having to eat it myself in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, nom, 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 nom. Also, the <laughs> shit was made out of chocolate and marmalade, so it was fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> they did. They did a good job. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, anything, so uh, <laughs> for some reason, we're we're back to two thousand and one here. Uh, we're, we're over the hump for the cage career. This is the second half. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Things are coming up roses. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, yeah, sorta. Uh, well, this was, this was August 17th, 2001 is when this movie debuted. Uh, it cost $57 million. Uh, it grossed only $62 million. (laughs) And that's the worldwide gross. Um, it opened at number six behind American Pie 2, <laughs> Rush wow. Hour 2, Ooh. Rush Hour 2, yeah, Rat Race, oh. The Others, oh, dear uh, and The Princess Diaries. Oh. <laughs> um, the only things that really beat out uh, were American Outlaws and Osmosis Jones. There was nothing else really of note coming out that week. Um, also, critics weren't too nuts about this movie either for some reason. I wonder why. Huh. Yeah, I can't figure it out. Yeah. Huh. I but, mean, uh, isn't it sorry, true that all Italians in the war were, like, operatic singers? Yeah, yeah. They, oh, they, yeah. None of them uh, really uh, held guns or anything uh, so much. They'd just sort of parachute in with the mandolin on their back and they'd play a song, you know. Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, hey, Mussolini's dead. That's That's cool. Let's go home. And the German guy shows up. It's like, wait a minute, guys, you don't want the war to end. We're having such fun. Yeah. And it's like, hey, German guy, I can't help but notice that you have dark hair like Adolf Hitler. I'm a German <laughs> guy. I'm going to act like that's awkward for some reason, even though I'm really into Hitler. I, this is just... I'm rather shocked at this. <laughs> what is the point of this scene? Yeah. Singing songs and fucking ladies. That is what we do. Hoo-hoo. Yes, and when right all, around the world. When they all surrendered, they said, Leave the gun, take the cannoli. And they did. That's exactly <laughs> what they did. Uh, uh, this is our uh, this is our third cage movie to begin with the letter C. Uh, and the C stands for crap in every instance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do either of you want to summarize what the movie's about? Oh, or dear, well, can sad. we also see if this ties in with Birdie, since it also had to deal with World War Two? No. Um, well, I, 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 I and to break it down, I mean, it, it's it's a uh, it's a bunch of sanitized bullshit derived from a book that was derived from some real incidents on this Greek island in World War Two, and uh, according to a guy that some people think the book was based on, uh, the book kind of missed the boat too. So, but up, up. 
<laughs> well, uh, so, okay, um, it, the book is mostly about the events that happened uh, leading up to and following uh, the invasion of the Italian troops on this Greek island, Cephalonia. And um, one of those soldiers happens to be Nick Cage, his character, who falls in love with the doctor's daughter. Um, can the doctor's uh, daughter. <laughs> Pelagia. Pelagia. Penelope Her Cruz. name's Penelope Cruz. Yeah. She yeah. got some nice tits. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I was going to get into that in the close off segment. <laughs> I thought you were going to get there's into that. There's plenty for it, so we'll let you get <laughs> to it. <butt>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, yeah, there is also uh, butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get into that later. <laughs> uh, 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 Getting into Christian Bale's ass. Um, uh, so yeah, it's kind of like, well, um, her character is, uh, engaged to Christian Bale's character, and, uh, Mandras, and, Because uh, he's the only man around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, Everybody else is extras. And I mean, look you at that lines. ass. I'm into that. <laughs> Um, but she falls in love with Nick Cage, and, uh... But at first, they don't like each other very much. No. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah. So, after the invasion of... Actually, uh, after the, um, uh, after Italy surrendered, uh, it's believed that, in real life, it's believed that 5,000 Italian soldiers were executed by the Germans, and, uh, and that's... another 3,000 died on a ship that was taking them to a prison camp that was sunk by the Allies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so, um, yay, fun stuff. And uh, yeah, rainbows and yeah, puppies. Th yeah, that's the history, and the history is kind of neat. Uh, the, the movie version of history, though, is that if you had more than three lines, you'll live forever. Pretty oh, much. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, none of the you know, spoiler alert, everybody. None of the principal characters die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> even though it's a it's even though there's a fucking war and an earthquake, you know, it's kind of like this. It's got to at least slow some of you down. Yeah, I was genuinely surprised the doctor survived that. Um, I believe in the book he does not. <laughs> oh, so, but yeah. then he wouldn't be narrating it, acting all kinds of half Greek. Yeah. Okay, and I I have to say that the doctor is played by motherfucking John Hurt. Yeah, the one, the one and only goddamn John Hurt. God, you know, I and for all him. seasons, famous the proposition. from Alien. <laughs> and and yeah, yep, yeah, and uh, getting his chest ripped open in Alien. Yeah. And Harry Potter, he sold Harry lots. Potter, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a word about uh, the principal character, though, uh, uh, Penelope Cruz. Um, she was born in Madrid, and she's also a real square cat because she was born in 1974. Um, she first appeared in 1989 in the music video, and then she did some TV hmm. and started movies in 92. Um, she did some Pedro Almodovar movies, uh, and she was in one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. You know, she kind of gets around. Uh, she was also in Open Your Eyes and the remake Vanilla Sky, oh, which right. is not a good movie. So. No. And, Sorry, uh, Penelope. Uh, was it uh, Vicky Cristina Barcelona? Yeah, she she gets around. Yeah. yeah. Um, and she's got nice tetes. <laughs> Indeed. This, this uh, yeah, it, it, your segment is going to have a lot to say. Oh uh, yeah. For later, yeah. Um, so I, I think we have a total of one Greek uh, person in this movie. Uh, we got Irene Pappas, mm -hmm. um, who was in the Guns of Navarone, and she was in the Message by mm -hmm. Mustafa Akkad, and uh, she was in Z for Costa Gavras. And um, she's a treasure. And she's she's a bit of a treasure, yeah. She's she's in there uh, being being mom because you know she's got a little bit on in years. And she's beating the hell out of her son throughout most of the movie. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we gotta gotta love this uh, this 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 uh, lively portrait of all these vivacious Latins. Yeah. <laughs> a singing and a dancing and a hitting your spouse. <laughs> <laughs> Please, uh, all my life does is nag. Put the pee back in my ear. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So, so uh, a, a lot of the critics couldn't help but take note that uh, that uh, Captain Crowley's Mandolin is one of those movies that screams, Hey, notice me, notice me, give me an Oscar, come on. I'm one of those award movies. 
Uh, and one of the reasons for that is because this is directed by that asshole John Madden. Uh, Who you may is... know for Shakespeare in Love. For fucking Shakespeare <laughs> in Love and Ethan Frome and Proof and stuffy Merchant Ivory type shit with people like Maggie Smith and Dame Judi Dench. I think no disrespect a, to Dame Judi Dance or Maggie Smith, her. but those type of love fucking of movies, though, like Merchant Ivory fucking... I, I think this best. is the part where you share what Professor Duran said to us about Oh, oh God. Love. Okay, so Linda and I met at, at, uh, but a while ago in Foundations of the Performing Arts when this movie was still pretty new. Um, and my boyfriend at the time was speaking very well of Shakespeare in Love. He thought it was delightful. Yeah. And uh, our professor, Duran Crable, uh, chimed in with her very wise, sage opinion. She said it was, quote, an abortion of a movie. <laughs> um, she's with she God now, wrong. and that's part of why we miss her. Yes. <laughs> For saying that? <laughs> yeah. She was yeah, a treasure. It was like, it was like good, good on you, Duran. Yeah. You. She was amazing. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Yeah, no, um, so uh, Lindy, you already mentioned Christian Bale. Christian Bale. <laughs> now, now, uh, most of you probably do know who Christian Bale is, but here's a little recap. Uh, Christian Bale is Newsies. Um, <laughs> he he's Little Women. Empire um, of the Sun. He was yeah. the white guy in the 2000 version of Shaft. Um, he's a Swing Kids, and uh, he's also <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> he's a huge <laughs> asshole on set. Christian Bale, everybody. Good for him. Um, and furthermore, I don't care how much you see of him in this one, American Psycho, the year before, you saw all of them. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, again, this movie didn't need to get made. No, oh. but people wanted a more condensed version of, you know, love and war and stuff like that. And... Yeah, they needed that all the fuck over again. They need that every time. It's like, you know, I just saw the English patient and stuff, yeah. but let's see another one, yeah. yeah well, I just understanding... sat through four hours of the English patient. <laughs> <laughs> well, to my understanding, the the book didn't have, like, it wasn't all about the, the stupid romance. It was more like... Well, yeah, the book's well going. regarded. I imagine it wasn't. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was just a forced thing. Yeah, well, I mean, the the book apparently covered a lot of ground. So, like, to make a movie out of it, you you of course needs must uh, you know reduce it in some fashion. But the you know the the sort of stock romance. Also, the fact that they have a uh, a potentially uh, tense situation here. You know, being that he's part of an occupying force, shared mm -hmm. his boyfriend who was fighting them. You know, he comes back like shot to shit, you know, and it's like she's kind of hiding him maybe a little bit. And th there's never anything to it, you know? Yeah, it just happens. Like, that could have been a whole movie right there, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they don't show any, like, reason for her to even think kindly about him. No. It, it's just, it's kind of, I mean, it's over two well, hours long, but it still, oh, like, God, it's doesn't. It's so fucking long. Yeah. yeah, it's just like the the romance, just like it, it seems like forced. I mean, I I, I enjoyed watching well, the movie, but it, it it does have its problems, and that's one of them. Yeah, it's kind of weird that a movie where the romance is made the focus, they decide just to go with a stock romance. You yeah, know, well, instead of instead of finding some way to develop it better, the movie did kind of give it away when they did say that love starts with the eyes. That's very much this movie. You just either love it or you don't, and no one loved it. No one loves it. Actually, yeah. I know someone who does. <laughs> oh, golly. All right. Well, uh, uh, is it Carlo? Because he's like, hey, there's a guy named Carlo in this. I'm in this. Oh, God, he died. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it's actually our friend Arjun from uh, Deep Hist Into History. Okay, what um, did Arjun say? He said, my thoughts on Ca Captain Corelli's mandolin are this. I know that some see it as cheesy. However, it shows a side of World War II that most movies never explore, and the novel on which it is based is excellent. Cage will be Cage, but I think there was genuine on-screen chemistry with Penelope Cruz, and it transcended an ordinary Cage flick to become something, at least in my mind, special. It's hard to describe, but I saw this movie, uh, or excuse me, saw this film during a particularly dark period of my life, and I guess that took the hope from the hopelessness of their situation. Um, I, as a result, I will always have a soft spot for this movie. Unlimited love to the Cage's Kiss crew. <laughs> <laughs> Out on the streets for a living, 
Pictures already begun. Oh man, when he's jamming out of the mandolin, I'm like, fuck yeah. Yes, but he has to call us off first. (laughs) Right, right, right. It's like, young man, I'm not going to sit here all night while you count off. (laughs) I am always happy to have an opportunity for us to serenade Arjun. After my first few episodes, some of my newfound fans called me a lore master, which was an honor and so epically cool. But the thing is, I desire to be known as THE lore master. So, this is the tale of the rise of an epic podcast that critics say is redefining a genre. The tale of a man who decided that his calling in life was to give a future to the past. The saga of Arjun, your lore master. Come dream with me as we go deep into our stories. If you think you've been taken to a battlefield before, I assure you, you're mistaken. So take a deep breath, let it out slowly, put some smoke in the air if you choose, and prepare to let your mind flow to my voice as we go deep. Welcome to Deep Into History, available everywhere. Speaking of music, uh, the really shitty stock score for this movie was by Stephen Warbeck, who'd done a lot of scores to other John Madden movies, which also suck. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah... Um, some critics thought this movie was really beautiful, uh, but it was shot by John Tull, uh, who did like Legends of the Fall and Braveheart mm. and the Thin Red Line. Uh, and he shot, uh, Cloud Atlas, uh, for the Wank Twins. Wow. Oh. Um, and, uh, frankly, I don't think the movie looks all that great, you know? It's, yeah, well, so. I think it, they had a great location. And well, I, I honestly, I think that's part of the problem. I think that's part of why the movie costs $60 million. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you well, ever notice how Greece kind of looks a lot like Southern California? You could have just stayed there. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help but notice that. Well, I mean, sure, authenticity. Like, well, look, look, I mean, like, yeah, they got, they got, the, they, they're in the real, they're on the real island where it was set, you know, and it's like, yeah, and a lot of people don't know about that massacre. I mean, like, there's, just some hmm. history, I guess, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, the um, woman who wrote the screenplay, uh, Sean Slovo, uh, I found she was, uh, she also worked as a miscellaneous crew member on King of Comedy. Oh. So maybe, I hate to she say it, but. She them all with her pratfalls. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe uh, she should have stuck to miscellaneous crew. <laughs> um, well, yeah. So, uh, oh, by the way, uh, John Ben was not the original choice for director of this. Uh, right. This was this was originally going to be made by the dude who made Notting Hill. Um, wow. But he had a real big heart attack, so he didn't get to do this one. Um, God struck him so- down. He was so excited about doing this, he even has references to it in his, you know, in, in Notting Hill. Um, uh, but, you know, he didn't die so later he did Enduring Love with Daniel Craig, um, which isn't great, but I'd rather watch it than Captain Corelli's Mandolin. Yeah. Ooh, um, Cage in an interview said that they say that the island of Cephalonia has a curse, which is that when you're there, you have nightmares. And I had some. I had some pretty bad dreams. They were always very violent. It's like you could feel the energy of all the violence that happened on that island. I think that's valuable in terms of the work. Or it was indigestion. (laughs) Or it was indigestion. Just a spot of beef. (laughs) More gravy than the grave to you. (laughs) I I had been drinking olive oil by the barrel full. (laughs) And then he would grease himself up in the olive oil for well, acting I purposes. In grape, be- grape leaves, yeah. <laughs> so this movie is like a a salute to longness, though. I mean, like it, yeah. right from the mm. get go, you get like Attack of the Killer Production Company logos that just won't mm-hmm. stop. Yeah, um, it's it's claims to be based on that book, but I think from all the singing, it might in fact be based on Adam Sandler's Opera Man. <laughs> it could be. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell me, Possibly. do you sing? <laughs> I'm Captain Corelli. I've attained this rank without ever touching a gun, but I sing. You know? <laughs> well, he said he wanted to do this because it was something different, which has uh, always appealed to him. But uh, he also said that he's always uh, responded to romantic subject matter. Oh. He sure has. It, this is uh, quite like uh, th- this is a follow up to his other uh, romantic uh, World War II movie, uh, being Time to Kill. 
Yeah. Where he's where he's another very romantic uh Mussolini soldier. There's yeah. a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> who uh, uh gave a okay. cigarette to a lizard yeah you know okay so maybe it's not romantic but it's more accurate <laughs> wow <laughs> oh and uh we should also mention that uh as the nazi what what is he general i can't remember was uh yeah. david morrissey baby <laughs> what so i i i looked him up but i don't really know what we know him from um hmm. He's in a lot of like uh, British stuff. Um, like he yeah, he in... is hella British. Like the accent just keeps sh- poking through. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit in the ball. Um, <laughs> but he's uh, probably best known for um, being. I think it was the governor on uh, Walking Dead. Oh, uh, oh, there there was that show that happened. Yeah, that was a thing. And he's also famous for not being the singer Morrissey. Hey. Yeah, no, I, I, I couldn't help but notice that. Too. Well, that's that's probably to his credit, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sadly, these days, yes. Um, he <laughs> but was he also... is human and he needs to be loved. <laughs> so we're told. <laughs> <laughs> um, he was also in Good Omens as Captain Vincent. Uh, so that's a thing. That was awesome. Oh yeah. And uh, he was in the other Bolin Girl. But uh, yeah, it, not a lot of stuff here on our side besides uh, Walking Dead, really. I think he keeps busy. That's uh, that's nice. That's nice. That's cool. You know? It's cool. <laughs> it's <laughs> well, okay. Isn't that special. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah, you know, he, he's not why this movie's a piece of shit. God didn't make him for you, Donnie. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fans of whatever podcast this is. I'm Adam. I'm Marcy. And I'm Robin, and we are the, the Black, Black Case, Case Diaries. Diaries. The Black Case Diaries is a movie and TV podcast hosted by three friends, us, in the exotic land of Ohio. We cover any topic related to film or TV. Our goal is to learn as much as we can and teach others in the process. We have something for every movie or TV fan. Movie scores? Got it. Pokemon? Got that too. Disney movies? Of course we do. Avatar? <laughs> James Cameron or Nickelodeon? Nickelodeon. We're working on it. If this sounds like a show for you, find us wherever you listen to podcasts. Or at blackcasediaries.com. Go check out the Black Case Diaries today. Happy listening. <laughs> so I, I guess uh, I, I got the movie uh, running running here in the background without sound. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, apparently uh, 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 in Greece, it's just always noon. I noticed that. Yeah. yeah th- that sun just does not go down. No. <laughs> it won't. You know, when you're that, you know, when, when you're over there in the Mediterranean, you know, just like sun, sun, sun all night long. Yes. <laughs> it's enough to drive you mad. Well, uh, you know, but like, like in my intro, I was saying like, how the hell are you supposed to get behind, you know, an ally? <laughs> like, uh, you know, somebody who's like working with the Nazis, but uh, they, they do... Uh, fix it question mark um, uh, well when... the, the, yeah okay this is this is this is pc digestible treatment of history yes. right here by the way this is for mm-hmm. audiences who like so the, basically the takeaway uh from this is is that uh no, nothing bad in world war ii was ever done by anybody who wasn't a nazi <laughs> yes you know See, you well, are fact, allies it, it, oh that doesn't mean i like them <laughs> oh okay <laughs> <laughs> You're cool, it's like ne- never mind that 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 fascism the concept of fascism was fucking invented by Mussolini you know like Italian fascism came first Hitler got his ideas from Mussolini and yeah. he did a little bit better at them but I think the the primary difference is is that uh, Hitler uh, convinced uh, a, a downtrodden German populace that they were in fact awesome somehow you know just yeah. just genetically whereas uh, Mussolini convinced everybody that he was awesome. And after a while, the Italians are like, I don't know if he's so awesome. I think we should <laughs> gut him and hang him upside down at the gas station. Oh, isn't that pretty? Okay, problem solved. Well, uh, I was talking about the scene where uh, Captain Weber says, uh, you know, Morrissey's character says, Heil Hitler. And Corelli says, Heil Puccini. <laughs> I can get behind that. Puccini's boss. Yeah. <laughs> it's true, but I guess that was their their chance to say like look he's not a nazi 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I I still uh, I still prefer the uh, the 1940s version of To Have and Have Not with uh, Jack Benny, where where uh, they're like Heil Hitler, and uh, in Hitler makeup he's all like Heil myself. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> a Nazi, more like a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, but um, uh, you know this this movie really wanted us to know that there was a World War II going on. In fact, they blew their whole budget on World War II battle scenes that didn't need to be there yeah. and didn't save any for the earthquake at the end. No. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wow, John Madden, you really blew the fuck out of a Greek island. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then uh, follow all that up with a made-for-TV earthquake. Uh, I know. Yeah. When I was watching, I was kind of like. What the fuck's happening? It's like, oh, it's an earthquake. Oh. <laughs> it's supposed to be an earthquake. Yeah, in the foreground, a bottle shake on shelves and the trees remain stationary in the background. <laughs> yeah. It's like, really? You couldn't get a wing machine or get some guy to shake it? You know, if it was good enough like for Star actually... Trek, it's good enough for this movie. <laughs> uh, 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 we'll get back to that in my face off. <laughs> oh, oh, I cannot wait. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Uh, but uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, seriously, like, like this is this is a sixty million dollar movie for for this for this crummy romance, and you you can't you can't help but think it's like, couldn't they have just shot the whole thing in Mexico for six million bucks and just got it done? You know. Robert Rodriguez. Well, one. yeah, yeah. Well, and all the yeah. jets that you see were like added in digitally. Yeah, <laughs> because they were all being used for another movie at the time. <laughs> so, oh, God. yeah. So I think you're right. I think a lot of the budget went to filming on on the island. Yeah, it, it just doesn't doesn't seem like the the production was that cleverly appointed. No, <laughs> hmm. you know. Um, but he tried. So, uh, is this a good time to go into my segment? I, I think, I think we've all been sort of dancing around your segment because there's, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of, uh, material for Bust that. Up. So <laughs> in that case, <laughs> go, I want his clothes it. off, clothes off. <laughs> so you get to see Bale's ass like right out the gate. Awesome. And Bale invites you to sh- to bring your friends along. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, you know, uh, I really feel like he, it, his ass deserved an Oscar for this. It was his best performance yet. Um, also, it did better um, than his face. <laughs> <laughs> did you feel a connection? <laughs> uh, yeah, I wasn't paying so much attention to his face. Um, <laughs> um, also, there were four boobies, uh, four pairs of boobies. And, whoa! Penelope boobs. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're going to get the Joe Bob drive-in totals, we also get explosion with fireball. One yes. massacre. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. One hang lady with a sign hung on her. <laughs> Two cannonballs. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, cannon yeah, yeah. We get, we get uh, I think was is it, I guess it's money shot out of a cannon, and then later rock <laughs> shot out of a cannon yeah. into Christian Bale's ass. Yeah. <laughs> we get we get some musical interludes. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. With several yeah. mandolin solos. Yeah, yeah. Uh, rock cannon foo. I guess. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we get. Uh, John Hurt pulling a pee out of a guy's ear that's been there since he was a kid, so it's not so yeah. fresh. <laughs> and then, of course, he later begs him to put it back in his ear because he can't stand his wife nagging. Because <laughs> women be bitching. <laughs> <laughs> now you don't have any excuse when I say take out the trash. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bitches be crazy. It's true. Oh, that's what we do. Yeah. All oh, those hot Latin women. Ah, so passionate. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, do you guys feel ready for face off? Uh, face this bitch off? Yeah, you put, put, bury me face down in the fucking gutter, because uh, yeah. this was goddamn... Uh, uh, well, I, I have one prepared. I'll bury you face know. down at Christian Bale's ass. <laughs> Damn it. How, how is he not just the other James Brolin? I mean, like... Uh, yeah. 
I'm sorry, like, 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 you know, I love dudes, but Christian Bale just never got my motor humming. I'm sorry, you know. No. That's Wales' ass, I'll have you oh, know. <laughs> and yeah, oh, funny you should mention that. He was born in Wales, but he claims he's not a Welshman. No. It's, it's English. English all the way. Yes. Uh. Oh, my. Lies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although I'd much prefer Welshmen like Patrick McGee and Richard Burton. Were you not digging his accent? <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's all kinds of accents uh, flying around in this. Uh, that was a criticism that Mr. Ebert had of this. Um, he thought it would have been better if they'd just done a movie with subtitles. It's like, yeah, thanks, Ebert, a movie that nobody can sell in North America. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the box office <laughs> fucked up bad enough. Yeah, you fuck off, Ebert. <laughs> well, honestly, if it had been subtitled, I think that it would have had a better chance at getting an Oscar. Yeah, well, she would have got the Oscar. It just wouldn't have got the piddly money that it did get. Is yeah, what I'm saying uh, some people sure. made that case. I remember years ago uh, in in the forums there, they'd make that case about about Schindler's List. They're like, why don't they just uh, you know have them all do German? And I'm like, I'm like, let's let's you know let's not fuck around here. Like actors should just use the accent they came with for the most part. No kidding. You know, uh, you know, and I don't object to to people of other nationalities playing other nationalities and shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it's acting for the love of fuck. You know, like there's going to be something mm -hmm. that's like, you're right. He doesn't actually have a broken leg. He's acting. My God, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who'd have thunk it? You know. <laughs> well, then you're gonna love my cast and face off. Oh, okay, oh, should, should we start with yours? <laughs> okay, so I have got two versions. Okay. Um. So one I I cast just out of sheer curiosity. I want the fuck to see this so bad and I want to hear their accents. I've got as Antonio Carelli, Keanu Reeves. Oh. <laughs> Cuz he did such a great job with the British accent before, right? Especially in Dracula. <laughs> and uh as Pelagia, I have Rosie Perez. Cuz fuck all y'all, I want to see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, you're in the Italian army. I can't be dating you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck off. <laughs> oh, the fuck off scene. Oh. No. What a nice quiet laugh that must have been. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Um, uh, yeah, so we should say, in case you're never going to see this movie and you haven't. And you're never um, going to. Yeah, um, there was uh, at one point they have Captain Corelli uh, translate the mayor's uh, message to the Italian troops, and it was simply "fuck off." <laughs> and then <laughs> something like, "If you if you don't understand my last message, come in here and I can show you." <laughs> if you don't know, it, fuck off. Man. <laughs> we'll fuck you right off in here, Buster Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, you're a, you're a juggalo. God damn it, no. <laughs> my brother, the juggalo, <sighs> who juggles hoes. Um, <laughs> my serious cast would be uh, as Corelli. I had Billy Zane, oh, uh, oh who's yeah, actually of of uh, Greek descent. Uh, well, he but was chosen I'm, as a Greek god. Yeah, it's no. true. Uh, yes, you look fine. God damn, is he fine? Um, <laughs> or at least he was. Um, and That's then, how I we'll always remember him. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he was the be better part of that that last season of uh, of Twin Peaks. Um, then as Pelatia, I have Asian <laughs> Asia Argento. Oh, oh. fuck you, Adrian. <laughs> oh, you're serious casting? My God. Oh. <laughs> Shots fired. All right, all right. Did, did I'm you, having yeah. a Greek play Antonio, did, and did, I'm having uh, an Italian play Pelagio. Okay. Oh, and oh, as enough. Mandras, I have Christian Bale's ass. Yeah. There. Okay. Well, I I I have a more complete uh, casting here. Donnie, do you mind if I go before you? I do not mind at all. Okay. So uh, my, my version uh, would would have been a, a little bit economical, a more economical version of Captain Crowley's mandolin. Mm -hmm. uh, I I would have I would have done one. Uh, this this is if the production had been done in 1960, um, and had cost in the neighborhood of say sixty thousand dollars. <laughs> And had been directed by Roger Corman, uh, with the musical score by Ronald Stein. Uh, so for Captain Corelli, I think Charles Bronson. 
Because at that time he was doing Corman movies and movies of that ilk. Yes. Uh, for uh, uh, for Mandaras the magician, the Christian Bale character, um, I'm thinking William Shatner. My God. Uh, 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 for Pelagia, I think uh, Barbara Steele. Uh, for Doctor John Hurt, Peter Lorre. Um, Nobody the replaces German John Captain? Hurt. <laughs> Too late. It's done. <laughs> For the German captain, Mark Damon. Uh, wow. And uh, for the guy with the pee in his ear, Dick Miller. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Miller would have done it. <laughs> it would have been 65 minutes long, and it would have been a hell of an easier sit. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll put a pee in my ear. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> and later I'll kill people and turn them into sculptures. <laughs> Uh, Donnie, Lord. who you got? <laughs> oh, God. So, uh, yeah, for uh, Captain, well, Corelli, we're going to have Bobcat Goldthwait. Oh, and hell yeah! And as his love interest, we'll have Marion Ramsey. And as Carlo, we'll have David Graff. And in the part of the uh, Nazi officer who's totally our friend, we're going to have Art Matrano. And... <laughs> The best for this one is going to be an Madras. That is going to be Mr. Steve Gutenberg. I'm basically yes! taking the cast Goots! of Police Academy 3 and putting it in this movie. <laughs> Yay! Was that one Citizens on Patrol? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Goots. Why don't you just have Lo Lloyd Kaufman direct it? <laughs> Because I didn't want green vomit everywhere. <laughs> Again, it couldn't have hurt it. It's true. Another version of Tromeo and Juliet. Uh, <laughs> and all the narration by Lemmy. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes. This time, uh, Captain Mandarin came onto this island and fucked it all up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch me, baby. I'm shaking so much. <laughs> Hell yes. Uh, were you guys able to find any wisdom? Oh, for the love of fuck. Uh, World War II was a thing and Hitler was naughty. World War II was just a sequel, goddammit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Accurate. Uh, Adrian, were you able to oh, find any wisdom? Oh, fuck. God. Yeah, yeah, don't fish fucking mines out of the sea and blow them up in front of an audience <laughs> if your <laughs> wire isn't long enough, you stupid bastard. <laughs> Uh, my piece of wisdom is don't mess around with explosives unless it's going to end with Christian Bale showing his ass. Oh, <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, maybe, uh, don't, don't, uh, you know, white knight and voice your opinions in front of the, you know, murdering Nazi, you know, yeah, cause later on that. you'll get massacred. And if your friend doesn't hug you, you'll die from the bullets entering your body. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of bullets. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it, that's another uh, Ooh, piece Sam of wisdom. Sam Peckinpah's Captain Corelli's man. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Sam motherfucking Peckinpah. Sam motherfucking Peckinpah. <laughs> so that's another piece of wisdom we can have. Uh, always find a friend that will hug you and protect you from bullets. Yes. And if yeah, you're going to yeah. do history right, get Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> the shooting scene would have gone on for five minutes oh, Lord. Uh, uh, well. and then they would have killed hitler speaking <laughs> of movies that don't end oh, God. Uh. i'm samuel jackson and i'm gonna throw in some narration here that's inappropriate <laughs> this is totally period talk people <laughs> Let me break it down for you. Because breaking the fourth wall is what I do. <laughs> oh, you are a master mimic. <laughs> I suppose this is the time where I say, please, please, please uh, oh, help us be found by going on to Apple Podcasts and rating, uh, reviewing, and subscribing to our podcast. Uh, tell your friends, tell your enemies about us. And uh, if you find yourself on uh, Podchaser, if you can give us a uh, review there, that would be awesome. Uh, you can also find Cage's Kiss on Facebook and on Twitter at Cage's Kiss. Uh, you can visit our website at cageskiss.com, and you can write to us at cageskiss at gmail.com. And uh, I, for once, have a uh, promo. 
Oh. No way. Oh. You? Yeah. What, what, what? Uh, in a couple days, you will be, uh, well, you should be listening to my new podcast, Bed Knobs and Broom Flicks, where Holy I will be talking shit. about. <laughs> Adrian so made us some amazing <laughs> art. Well, that's what plugs are for, son of a bitch. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Adrian made us some awesome uh, cover art. And uh, we're going to be covering witches in uh, film and television, uh, witches, man witches, sorcerers, uh, whatever magic practitioners. Ooh, man witch. Man witch. Mm. <laughs> I want me some man witch. And uh, also, I every now and then I'll be covering our favorite familiars, uh, going over animal heroes in history. And uh, Jane will be covering uh, witchy history. So, Ooh, three lives of Thomasina. <laughs> what <Well>, it's history <laughs> so it once again that's uh, bed knobs and broom flicks it's bed knobs and broom flicks broom See. dicks broom flicks <laughs> <laughs> so uh adrian what you got oh dear lord um he's no, got spirit well, the, yeah i got spirit yes i do uh, <laughs> uh, uh <laughs> Uh, I got a severe case of depression for having seen this week's movie. Um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, my YouTube's still A.A. A. Smith. Uh, why don't you uh, hop on there and see see what you see? You know, see, see if I care. Um, and uh, my my uh, DeviantArt is still Leo the Fox on DeviantArt.com. And I really do honestly put shit on there and you should come poke at it with a stick. Yeah. Are you still doing uh, taking submissions for... Uh, Commissions? Yeah, uh, but by the by the time this post, uh, the window will be narrow, but there will still be time. Ah, okay. For for, for dreadful tales. Uh, Ooh, can right. you tell us a little bit about that? What is what yeah, is dread, this? dreadful tales is is a group I have on there that produces like a like a mock pulp magazine like once every two months. Oh yeah, we're 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 going we're going for the for the real fucking vintage like eighteen uh, eighties to to about nineteen thirty nine. Very cool. Looking, look, looking for that uh, that old genre flavor, you know, the shit where it was about entertainment and not about like being quote unquote respectful, you know, yeah. of like quote unquote laws. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Donnie, I have nothing going on as I am jobless and depressed. I'm still the unreal oh. goals at Twitter. And I just want to say anything can happen on Halloween. So, yeah, be ready for Hell that. Hell yeah. Yeah, just stay indoors. It's basically the purge out there. Yeah. <laughs> now, why why was this fucking movie only a 24-hour rental on, on, on Amazon? Was that just them saving me from having to see it more times? I think it is. They're trying to limit your exposure. Oh, my God. I mean, this this movie can be used to induce vomiting. I bought mm -hmm. it on DVD. You paid goddamn... Well, I mean, I paid money for it, too. What, what did you pay? Did you pay more than four bucks? It was like eight dollars. Jesus Christ, my God, no. <laughs> was there commentary? Does John Madden yes. think he's a genius? There's commentary. Just, but does <laughs> oh, he, though? Like, 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 well... We're really it... happy with everything that happened here. It was really satisfying. I think I made a brilliant movie. It was kind of a jerk-off session of... Yeah, yeah, uh, I chose to film on on the island because I I wanted to bring justice to their stories and type of thing. So the island was like a second character or something. He actually fucking said. Of that. course they said that. They all fucking say that. They goddamn said that. shit. You know. Yes. Yes. And it was like World War Two was like another character. It was eerie. Yeah. God. And yes. that's how history happened. Unless you read a book. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't uh, read the book. <laughs> oh God, fucking no! But there, there really, there really was uh, an, an Italian captain um, who who was on the island who joined uh, the resistance uh, and helped the Greeks uh, fight off the Germans until they all ran out of ammo. Who really did survive being massacred? Yeah. Um, although the author denies that this person is the basis for the Corelli character, but the guy was still alive when the book came out. <laughs> and uh, they asked him about it. And he says, "I think they kind of mischaracterized the partisan movement there. I think they kind of fucked that up. You know, just saying." 
<laughs> yeah, and he, he didn't, didn't he seem like he's, he's still got a scar on his, like, the side of his face or neck from- I bet uh, he's got a few of them from fucking bullets getting injured. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because the German shot him at, like, it's point blank. Kind of a- You notice, uh, any, anytime anybody gets fucked up on this island, all of a sudden they're on John Hurt's kitchen table. It's like, Father, you must put on surgery. Well, I haven't got serum or anything like that. And it's like, well, why don't you just put the rosemary <laughs> olive oil on the wound? You know, that works for everything. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you get to see john hurt slap bale's ass so it's like i think yeah, he was doing was, it for uh, all of us so uh so uh when when uh when he was in that movie the naked civil servant that wasn't him acting that was just john hurt being john hurt is that what you're saying pretty much <laughs> <laughs> we love i'm you, john fabulous hurt. just you know <laughs> i, I love myself so a heroin <laughs> <laughs> and i had a terrible dream about being smothered <laughs> uh, and he was saying, I uh, was a um, fly that dreamed of being a man. <laughs> <laughs> he was also in uh, Only Lovers Left Alive. He was fucking amazing oh, yeah. in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did not see that one, Senator. Fucking love John Hurt. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, we'll be coming at you next week with our Hurt cast. It is done. In a war, you're going to get hurt. John Hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Corelli's mandolin. I'm still alive, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> With special guest star Al Hurt. <laughs> oh, um, before I forget, because I was totally about to, uh, I'd love to give a shout out and a big, big, big thank you uh, to ODPH607 and On Eight Legs, both for uh, submitting reviews on Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much. You're oh, amazing. We, we love review. you more than friends. <laughs> and uh um, I, I don't yeah. know about that <laughs> donnie will do the sex for you <laughs> what have they done for me lately <laughs> i just said they gave us good reviews <laughs> you've got to give them the sex donnie <laughs> <laughs> have they bought me a dinner maybe <laughs> <laughs> something nice like like a, a olive garden <laughs> yeah <laughs> then we'll family <laughs> Uh, Bad bottomless oh, pasta. Put, yeah, you put a just, bread you know, stick in my mouth and a right. dick in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, you gotta have the sack under your shirt to store all the breadsticks. So when you leave, and just tell everybody you're pregnant. You know, like you know, have another one in back for the mints. <laughs> Don't assume um, my gender. <laughs> yes, I was gonna say, how dare you assume my gender? <laughs> good day. <laughs> what do you know what a day. woman looks like? <laughs> like you ever been anywhere? <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, we will be seeing you next week with a Christmas carol. Oh, for the love of fuck! Oh, yeah, God damn it! Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I that stuff. that one I did have to buy because it's the only way you could see the fucking thing. <laughs> So, yeah, it's not streaming anywhere. Listeners, you're probably never going to see this movie, but, you know, you'll hear us bitch about it, so don't worry. We'll be selling it's it for got... $50. <laughs> uh... <laughs> and Donnie's used breadstick. <laughs> Slightly <laughs> used. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know God help mean. us all. <laughs> <laughs> and with that. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, Rule number three. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah. 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 Ah.